Ladies and gents, welcome back. I had another story planned, and then this happened this morning. Breaking news. At least 40 people have been killed Thursday in Russia's attack on Ukraine, according to Arestovich, uh, an advisor to President Zelensky. Now, uh, we're seeing um, lots of imagery of military weaponry uh, being having been taken out in uh, all over Twitter. A story broke this morning on ABC News. Russia, Ukraine update. Russia claims it neutralized Ukraine's military infrastructure. After the U.S. warned all day of a full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine that it was imminent, Vladimir Putin has just addressed the Russian people moments ago, announcing what Putin called the start of a military special operation, in his words, to demilitarize Ukraine, so that gonna... Russia would... Bring... Now, if there's anything that I've learned in the past two weeks of watching the trucker convoy and the representation in the media, it makes me not want to take their word for what's actually happening and yet go instead go directly to the source. So I understand that there's going to be conjecture on both sides and uh, I just wanted to get a more uh, robust feel for what's actually occurring here. So going right to the source, there's the Kremlin website where Vladimir Putin uh, made a speech this morning and uh, there's a translation on the page. So I'm going to go over some of the things that he points out uh, in this speech here. So he uh, addresses his citizens and dear friends. Today, I, again, I again consider it necessary to return the tragic return to the tragic events taking place in Donbass and the key issues of ensuring the safety of Russia itself. Let me start with what I said in my address of February 21st this year. We're talking about what causes us particular concern and anxiety about those fundamental threats that year after year, step by step, are rudely and unceremoniously created by irresponsible politicians in the West in, re in relation to our country. I mean the expansion of NATO bloc to the east, bringing its military infrastructure closer to the Russian borders. It is well known that for 30 years we have persistently and patiently tried to reach an agreement with the leading NATO countries on the principles of equal and indivisible sec security in Europe. In response to our protocol, uh, sorry, in response to our proposal, we are constantly faced with other either cynical deception and lies or attempts at pressure and blackmail, while the North Atlantic Alliance, in the meantime, despite all our protests and concerns, is steadily expanding, the military machine is moving, and I repeat, is coming close to our borders. Now, what he's describing here is basically NATO's push. There has been agreements that NATO wouldn't push into Ukraine, and yet uh, NATO is pushing into Ukraine. It, the, the, the equivalent would be to look at the Cuban Missile Crisis, I, I suppose, and, and uh, when the USSR was actually pushing to have uh, armaments in in Cuba, which is, by the way, just miles south of the United States. So this is um, this is big, big provocations um, happening here. He continued to say later in in his in his thing. I'm gonna post the entire uh, thing. Oh, I'll, I'll I'll leave the link in the description so you can read it for yourself. He goes on to say, as for the military sphere. Modern Russia, even after the collapse of the USSR and the loss of significant part of its potential, is today one of the most powerful nuclear powers in the world. And moreover, as certain advantages in a number of the latest types of weapons in this regard, no one should have any doubts that a direct attack on our country will lead to defeat and dire consequences for any potential aggressor. At this time, technologies, including defense technologies, are changing rapidly. Leadership in this area is 
passing and will continue to change hands. But the military development of the territories adjacent to our borders, if we allow it, will remain for decades to come and maybe forever and will create an ever-growing, absolutely unacceptable threat for Russia. Now, these are strong words, and I don't think that he's bluffing. I really, I honestly think what's going on here is quite irresponsible. I think that it's important to emphasize further the leading NATO countries in order to achieve their own goals support extreme nationalist and neo-Nazis in Ukraine in everything who, in turn, will never forgive the Crimeans and Sevastopol residents for their free choice, reunification with Russia. I'm going to get into a bit of that later because that prompted me to look this up. I wanted to see what he was talking about. They, of course, will climb into Crimea, and just like the Donbass with their war in order to kill as punishers from the gangs of Ukraine nationalists, Hitler's accomplices killed defenseless people during the Great Patriotic War. They openly declare that they lay claim on a number of other Russian territories. When he's talking about the Great Patriotic War, he's talking about the provocation of uh, Germany in the Second World War. The entire course of events and analysis of Incoming information shows that Russia's clash with the with these forces is inevitable. It is only a matter of time. They are getting ready. They are waiting for the right time. Now they also claim to possess nuclear weapons. We will not allow this to be done. Later he continues to say, Today's events are not connected with the desire to infringe on the interests of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. They are connected with the protection of Russia itself from those who took Ukraine hostage and are trying to use it against our country and its people. I repeat, our actions are self-defense against the threats posed to us from an even greater disaster than what is happening today. No matter how difficult it may be, I ask you to understand this and call for cooperation in order to turn this tragic page as soon as possible and move forward together not to allow anyone to interfere in our affairs in our relations but build them on our own so it, that it creates necessary conditions for overcoming all problems and despite the presence of state borders would strengthen us from inside as a whole i believe this in this is our future. I should also appeal to the military personnel of the armed forces of Ukraine. Dear comrade, comrades, he says, uh, your fathers, your grandfathers, great-grandfathers did not fight the Nazis defending our common motherland so that today's Nazis seized power in Ukraine. You took an oath of allegiance to the Ukrainian people and not to the anti-people junta that plunders ukraine and mocks these same people don't follow the criminal orders i urge you to lay down your weapons immediately and go home let me explain all servicemen of the ukrainian army who fill this requirement will be able to freely leave the combat zone and return to their families once again i insistently emphasize all responsibility for Possible bloodshed will be entirely on the conscience of the regime ruling in the territory of Ukraine. He continues later to say, Now a few important, very important words for those who may be tempted to intervene on what's on the in sorry, very important words for those who may be tempted to intervene in ongoing events. Whoever tries to hinder us, and even more so to create threats to our country, for our people should know that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead to 
lead you to such consequences that you have never experienced in your history. We are ready for all development of events. All necessary decisions in this regard have been made. I hope that they will be heard. These are the words of Vladimir Putin. Now, moving on from this situation, I immediately heard the the words that he was referring to about neo-Nazis in the region. So I started digging immediately. Uh, This is a story from Reuters saying, commentary, Ukraine's neo-Nazi problem. So they have a big problem in, in Ukraine. As Ukraine struggles against Russian or sorry, against Russia and its proxies continue, Kiev must also contend with a growing problem behind the front lines, far-right vigilantes who are willing to use intimidation and even violence to advance their agendas, and who often do so with the tact, the, the tacit approval of law enforcement agencies. Goes down here, uh, many of these national militia members come from the Azov movement, one of the 30-odd privately funded volunteer battalions that in the early days of the war helped the regular army defeat Ukrainian territory against Russian separatist proxies. Although Azov uses Nazi-era symbolism and recruits neo-Nazis into its ranks, a recent article in foreign affairs downplayed any risks the group might pose, pointing out that, like voluntary militias, Azov have been reined in, quote-unquote. Though its integration into Ukraine's armed forces, while it's true that private militias no longer rule the battlefront, it's a home for the... It's home front that Kiev needs to worry about. Again, here, the Sun reporting all-out war, Ukraine's neo-Nazi militia preparing to fight to the death in Russian war with guerrilla forces and Mad Max tanks. Now, Justin Trudeau, in recent time, grandstanded at the House of Parliament, uh, expressing his dismay at anyone who might even be loosely associated with anyone uh, carrying Nazi flags. Mr. Speaker, Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. We will choose to stand with Canadians who deserve to be able to get to their jobs, who be able to get their lives back. These illegal protests need to stop, and they will, Mr. Speaker. Of course, he was referring to the trucker convoy, which on the first day of the convoy in Ottawa, there was uh, one Nazi flag seen and one Confederate flag. Apparently, those guys got chased out of there immediately. They They were not welcome. But that didn't stop Justin Trudeau from grandstanding. However, I found this article here saying from this is from the CTV News, by the way. This is not some weird fringe website. This is CTV News. Far right extremists in Ukraine in Ukrainian military bragged about Canadian training report, says. Toronto, Toronto, a report exploring the far right in Ukraine's military found that neo-Nazis and supporters of far-right groups in ranks bragged online about receiving training from Canada and other NATO nations, prompting promises of a thorough review of the Department of National Defense. So, and again, I was digging. <laughs> I've, I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure that we weren't doing that, but it looks like that is something we are doing In Canada, we're training far-right neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine. Now, I don't know what this means. I'm just reporting on the facts that I have here at my disposal. These are events that are still developing as we speak. I'll be continuing to report on these events as the days go on. So please stay tuned. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. 
We'll keep you informed and we'll keep you up to date. And as always, keep on trucking.